Good morning, I'm Neva Reddy Manu, and this is your morning news fix for Wednesday, 8th of November. In this update, police want to find a 67 year old woman after her husband was found dead in Auckland's Ellerslie. They want to hear from anyone who's seen Mei Han Chong, an Asian woman of short stature with short dark grey hair and probably wearing glasses. The man was found dead at a house on Celtic Crescent on Sunday evening. His death has been treated as a homicide, but that will be confirmed after a post-mortem today. Detective Inspector Scott Beard says she could be a victim or a suspect. And he says a blue Kia Rio is missing from the address. A slip-up at three polling booths has seen votes wrongly counted for fringe parties. The Electoral Commission says it has launched a full check of all voting place results to establish if there are any other transcription errors. Demelza Jackson reports. The Commission admits a data entry error led to hundreds of votes being assigned to the Leighton Baker Party and the New Conservatives. That includes at two Port Waikato stations and one in Islam, affecting National Labour, the Greens, New Zealand First and Te Pati Māori. Chief Electoral Officer Carl Lacane says the number of votes involved was low and had little impact on the party vote. Northern Hawke's Bay has been hit with heavy rain overnight. Fire and Emergency Central Shift Manager Karen McDonald says they've had call-outs to up to four flooded houses in Nuhaka and one in Mahia and have helped a couple of flooded cars on State Highway 2. State Highway 2 between Napier and Gisborne is closed due to flooding and fallen trees. And there's also street flooding in Wairoa. Met Service meteorologist Stephen Glassy says the station at Wairoa Airport has measured 128 millimetres of rain since 7pm. Some of the hourly totals that we had were up over 25 millimetres per hour. Early childhood teachers are on strike from 1pm. They say negotiations for the Early Childhood Education Collective Agreement have reached an impasse. NZDI says this is due to not-for-profit, community-based services not being funded enough by the government. Montessori New Zealand Chief Executive Cathy Wilson told Kate Hawksby the outgoing government's funding essentially created a three-tier system with three lots of funding centres can opt into. However, all three of them are completely inadequate for centres to be able to pay full pay parity. An international law expert says the Pacific Islands Forum is more important than ever. Leaders are gathering in the Cook Islands this week for the region's main political decision-making forum of the year. Caretaker Deputy Prime Minister Carmel Cipollone and Government-elect MP Jerry Brownlee will fly out today. Waikato University's Al Gillespie says the Pacific had been invisible on the international stage but is now pushed to the front. Whether you're talking about the impacts of climate change or change in security dynamics or the way that nations even voting at the UN, the Pacific really matters. In sport, Glenn Maxwell's cramp affected 201 not out from 128 balls has taken Australia to a three-wicket victory over Afghanistan, chasing 292 in their World Cup cricket match at Mumbai. Australia have cemented a semi-final spot as a result. US Open semi-finalist Ben Shelton will return to the ASB Tennis Classic in Auckland in January. And Crusaders back Braden Enor has been ruled out of the next Super Rugby Pacific season due to infection complications from an ACL knee reconstruction. I'm Nivariti Manu. That's your latest news fix. We'll be back with the next update at midday from the Newstalk ZB Newsroom.